Public health laboratories strive to protect the public against infectious diseases and health hazards. They've been in existence for more than 100 years and play a vital role in our nation's public health infrastructure. Federal public health laboratories function under the guidance of federal government organizations such as CDC, FDA, and USDA. However, most public health laboratories are state-based, operating within state public health and agriculture agencies. State public health laboratories provide critical support to the mission of local public health departments, which may vary by state. Depending on your state, there may be one or more public health laboratory locations. Public health laboratories provide a multitude of essential services, including disease surveillance, outbreak detection, newborn screening, environmental and radiologic testing, applied research, and laboratory training. They also provide surge capacity for state public health agencies when testing is needed to support emergency responses. Public health laboratories play a key role in protecting the food supply and preventing, detecting, and responding to foodborne disease. They have the capability to test specimens from people, food, and beverages implicated in foodborne outbreaks. They also analyze food samples to detect, identify, and quantify toxic contaminants, such as pesticide residues and heavy metals. In addition, they monitor radioactive contamination of water, milk, shellfish, and other foods. Public health laboratories often identify and further characterize the causative agent involved in foodborne disease clusters. Depending on the laboratory capabilities, they may analyze specimens and samples for bacteria, viruses, parasites, and toxins. In total, public health laboratories perform specialized testing on tens of thousands of foodborne specimens annually. These specimens are generally submitted by commercial and clinical laboratories. Epidemiologists, regulators, and policymakers use this information to monitor foodborne disease trends, plan food safety programs, and develop and evaluate food safety policies, among other activities. Thus, public health laboratories serve as the backbone of foodborne outbreak detection and response. Public health laboratorians work for the benefit of the people. A public health laboratorian who primarily works with foodborne diseases is usually a microbiologist or molecular biologist located at a public organization, such as a local, state, or federal government laboratory. They identify and confirm causative agents for epidemiologic purposes. Public health laboratorians can be certified by the American Society for Clinical Pathology or the American Association of Bioanalysts. Clinical laboratorians work for non-governmental organizations, such as commercial or hospital laboratories. They identify pathogenic agents in patient specimens for the purpose of diagnosis and patient care. If a person sees a healthcare provider because they think they have a foodborne illness, they may be asked to submit a clinical specimen for diagnostic testing. This helps to determine what is causing their illness. Stool is the most common clinical specimen and is usually sent to a clinical laboratory. Results from laboratory testing are sent to the ordering healthcare provider. If the specimen is positive for a reportable disease or condition, an additional report will be forwarded to the appropriate local, regional, or state health department. In such cases, the positive specimen may be required to be submitted for confirmatory testing by the public health laboratory. If so, the clinical laboratory will ship the specimen to the appropriate laboratory. Specimens that are required to be submitted to the state public health laboratory vary by state. The Association of Public Health Laboratories, or APHL, promotes the role of state and local public health, environmental, and agriculture laboratories in the detection, testing, and surveillance of foodborne pathogens. APHL advances laboratory practice by increasing the competence of laboratory staff improving the capabilities of member laboratories, and strengthening the credibility of results generated by clinical, public health, and food testing laboratories. APHL provides a framework of core functions upon which laboratories may be assessed and seek to improve their capacity and skill in the services of public health. Public health laboratorians play an important role in disease surveillance. They submit data to national information and surveillance systems such as, but are not limited to, PulseNet, Bionumerics, Cedric, NARMS, Calicinet, and Kryptonet. These systems are central to the investigation and identification of outbreaks and the prevention of additional cases. 
PulseNet is a surveillance system coordinated by CDC. PulseNet investigates bacterial isolates from sick people, contaminated food, and the places where food is produced. PulseNet compares the DNA fingerprints of bacteria isolated from patients to find clusters of disease that might represent unrecognized outbreaks. Since the network began in 1996, PulseNet has improved our food safety system by significantly increasing the speed of outbreak identification. This allows investigators to find the source more frequently, alert the public sooner, and identify gaps in the food safety systems that would not otherwise be recognized. If the investigation includes a regulatory process or potential recall, USDA or FDA may become part of the investigation team. PulseNet collects results from a laboratory technique called Pulsed Field Gel Electrophoresis, or PFGE. PFGE is a technique that produces a unique DNA fingerprint of a bacterial isolate. A bacterial isolate is a group of the same type of bacteria. DNA is extracted from the bacterial isolate and is cut in a specific way using restriction enzymes. The DNA pieces are separated using an alternating electric field which flow through a gel matrix. The smaller pieces of DNA move faster down through the gel toward the bottom and the bigger pieces move slower and stay toward the top. This process creates a unique DNA fingerprint that is visible in bands within the gel matrix. Certified public health laboratorians use software called Bionumerics to analyze and upload PFGE data to the national PulseNet databases. Bionumerics is a platform for the management, storage, and analysis of all types of biological data. PulseNet central databases are managed by CDC. Managers investigate DNA patterns to see if they are appearing more frequently than the normal baseline occurrence. If a DNA pattern is above baseline, CDC managers work with state and local public health laboratorians and epidemiologists to investigate the potential outbreak. Bacteria that are submitted to PulseNet include Salmonella, Listeria monocytogenes, Escherichia coli, Campylobacter jejuni, Vibrio parahemolyticus, Vibrio cholera, Shigella, Clostridium perfringens, Yersinia pestis, and Clostridium botulinum. PFGE analysis varies by state. In general, state or local PulseNet laboratories identify clusters within their jurisdiction and PulseNet Central identifies multi-jurisdictional clusters. PulseNet has seven designated area laboratories available for training, troubleshooting, and surge capacity for the PulseNet labs within their region. PulseNet is committed to finding and using the best techniques to identify outbreaks, Currently, PulseNet is undergoing many changes because the network has added a new technology called Whole Genome Sequencing, or WGS, to its toolbox. Using WGS will enhance PulseNet's ability to detect and solve outbreaks faster and with more accuracy. Whole Genome Sequencing is a laboratory procedure that reads an organism's complete set of DNA, including all of its genes. WGS is a fast and efficient way to obtain high-level information about the bacteria using just one test. To further elaborate on the difference between PFGE and WGS, assume that one bacterial isolate is a train track. PFGE would identify one 2,000-meter long train, which is like the DNA fingerprint. WGS would identify every single item of cargo in every car of the 2,000-meter-long train, which is similar to the entire DNA makeup of an organism. Therefore, WGS will greatly improve the efficiency of how PulseNet conducts surveillance and identifies outbreaks. The system for enteric disease response, investigation, and coordination, commonly referred to as CEDRIC, is a web-based platform developed by CDC and Palantir Technologies to facilitate sharing of data for multi-state outbreak investigations of enteric disease. It helps investigators quickly view major summary data and compare outbreak-related cases and historical background cases. CEDRIC combines epidemiologic, laboratory, geographical, and traceback data across multiple disciplines under a single platform that can be used by multiple partners. Laboratorians enter data into Bionumerics. 
Cedric pulls data from bionumerics to ensure the necessary laboratory information is available to all enteric disease outbreak investigators. The ultimate goal of Cedric is to achieve better and faster responses to enteric disease outbreaks, especially multi-jurisdictional outbreaks involving a variety of disciplines and agencies. The National Antimicrobial Resistance Monitoring System for Enteric Bacteria, or NARMS, is a U.S. public health surveillance system that tracks antimicrobial resistance in foodborne and other enteric bacteria. It was established in 1996 as a collaboration among state and local public health agencies, CDC, FDA, and USDA. Public health laboratories submit isolates from human clinical specimens to CDC NARMS for antimicrobial susceptibility testing. Some states also participate in a retail meat sampling program, sending meat and poultry isolates to FDA NARMS for serotyping, antimicrobial susceptibility testing, and genetic analysis. USDA NARMS conducts similar tests on isolates from animal specimens at federally inspected slaughter and processing plants throughout the U.S. NARMS helps foodborne disease investigators detect emerging trends of resistance. It monitors antimicrobial resistance among enteric bacteria from humans, retail meats, and food animals. Data provided by NARMS can aid in the development of public health interventions and policies to protect people from the threat of antibiotic-resistant enteric infections. WGS can also help identify antimicrobial susceptibility profiles by detecting bacterial genes that are associated with antibiotic resistance. Calicinet is a national norovirus outbreak surveillance network of federal, state, and local public health laboratories. Over 50% of all foodborne outbreaks are caused by norovirus. Food can become contaminated with norovirus at any point along the farm to fork continuum. CDC launched Calicinet in 2009 to collect information on norovirus strains associated with gastroenteritis outbreaks in the U.S. Public health laboratories electronically submit laboratory data, including genetic sequences of norovirus strains and epidemiology data from norovirus outbreaks, to the Calicinet database. The norovirus strains can be compared with other norovirus strains in the database, helping CDC link outbreaks to a common source, monitor norovirus strains that are circulating, and identify newly emerging norovirus strains. CryptoNet is the first molecular tracking system for parasitic infections caused by Cryptosporidium. It collects data about the parasite to help public health officials understand sources of infection, how the parasite is spread, and disease risk factors. Cryptosporidium is mostly a waterborne disease, but can often be associated with unpasteurized or raw milk consumption because cattle are natural hosts for the parasite. It can also be associated with unpasteurized apple cider. CryptoNet was developed by CDC and operates similarly to PulseNet and CaliciNet. It uses molecular methods to identify cryptosporidium species, genotypes, and subtypes not previously known to infect humans. Surveillance systems such as PulseNet, NARMS, CaliciNet, and CryptoNet facilitate real-time sharing of laboratory and epidemiology data among local, state, and federal levels in the U.S. These systems help to identify outbreaks in a timely manner, track cases across jurisdictions, justify food recalls, and create enhanced guidance, policies, and regulations that improve food production and distribution practices. Without public health laboratorians conducting the analyses gathered by these systems, our ability to detect outbreaks and associations with specific food products would be severely reduced. When a foodborne disease outbreak is suspected, it is beneficial to consult with your public health laboratorian as soon as possible. Outbreak investigators should understand what tests the public health laboratory can perform, the types of samples and specimens they can test, and the overall capacity of the laboratory. Public health laboratorians may also provide insight to outbreak investigators on how samples and specimens should be collected and shipped to the laboratory. Laboratorians are often busy conducting laboratory tests, so notification before the arrival of clinical specimens associated with an outbreak can help them prioritize. 
Our next video will introduce how environmental health professionals work to detect, respond to, and prevent foodborne disease.